signs that you're just trying too hard in a relationship. There are certain signs that it's just, is it too hard or are we not willing to work hard enough? Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Happy to welcome Sandy Weiner back to Second Act, the dating coach, founder of Last First Date, and the author of Choice Points for Dating. I got the pointing right again. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy, thank you for joining me again. Thank you for having me again. Well, you you are always full of great information. And today I want to uh, talk about a, a, well, a recent article that you wrote. I think you did a video on it as well about signs that you're just trying too hard in a relationship. You know, we, we talk a lot about dating, finding love, et cetera, et cetera. And then once we do start to, you know, go down that road, there are certain signs that it's just, I don't know, is, is it too hard or are we not willing to work hard enough it's kind of kind of a arbitrary and big question uh, but that's kind of the road i want to go down do you want to say anything uh before we get started here yeah so not working hard enough i mean every relationship requires some mm -hmm. work what i'm talking about is a lack of reciprocity mm -hmm. so when you're doing most of the work you're doing all the heavy lifting you're you're the one making the plans and doing all the hard stuff and the other person is kind of sitting back mm -hmm and letting you do the hard work. And is this really working for you? And mm -hmm. so let's talk about some signs that people are trying a little bit too hard and what they can do instead. Perfect. Well, the first one you have here, uh, you make excuses for their bad behavior. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think we all do this at some point, especially at the beginning where we're thinking, oh, well, you know, so they didn't follow through on that date they had planned, but that they just got busy and you make an excuse for them. And it's not excusable. I mean, yes, we can get busy, but did they apologize? Yeah. Did they make it up to you? You know, so don't don't excuse bad behavior, especially at the beginning when we tend to do it most often mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. instead like really speak up you know, really speak up from the beginning. Yeah, that's such a great sign. And what I like about these conversations is that we don't think about that necessarily. That's why, you know, pointing out something that should be obvious, but isn't, I think can be really helpful when somebody, you hear that, just go, oh my God, yeah, I'm doing that. You know, let, let's, let's look at that a little bit more, more closely. Uh, you have uh, here, the second one, you overanalyze everything they do or don't. Yeah. So again, we're living in our head instead of actually saying something and finding out why they did what they did or didn't do, or just stop thinking about it because it's just a waste of energy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there are a lot of people who have a lot of anxiety and they bring that to dating and overanalyze everything, but it's, it's all in here. That's the problem. Yeah. And so you have to just be willing to bring it up. And, you know, why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? But yeah, th this is a tough one to think to sometimes to think about, especially if you have like an anxious attachment style, you know, where again, where's the difference between just having communication, asking for what you want or being needy. <laughs> so and I don't want to overcomplicate yeah. this, but I, I think that is part of it, isn't it? For sure. I mean, if you have an anxious attachment style, you tend to overthink and mm -hmm. you tend to overanalyze. And so if you know it's your tendency to do that, I'm not mm -hmm. saying you should bring up every single thing that's a thought because mm -hmm. that is needy. And yeah. often it's just your overactive brain and it has nothing to do with something that they actually were thinking or doing. Right. And so I think, you know, you want to observe behavior over time in that mm -hmm. case, because you want to see, is this, is this typical for them? Mm -hmm. Are they acting in a way that's different than their usual, especially if you've been going out with them for a while, if something starts to change, that's when you do have those conversations. But if you're just sitting there going, what did that mean? What did they mean by that? What if you, know, you can make mm -hmm. yourself crazy and you should not bring everything up. Right. Right, exactly. You oh well, 
you overanalyze everything you do. That's interesting. You overanalyze everything you do. Tell what do you mean by that? You start to doubt yourself. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't have called. Oh, I shouldn't have been so eager to text back. You know, that's the overanalyzing yourself. So mm -hmm. there's either the focus on them or the focus on you. And both of them are too much. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing, if you find yourself doing that, you might be working too hard. If you even have to do that, you shouldn't have to do that is what mm -hmm. I guess we're, what we're saying. I... <sighs> Again, as so much uh, does in these conversations, I can really identify <laughs> with it, you know, over, mm -hmm. over the lifespan of my relationships. You know, if, if only I had known that when I was younger, maybe we should appeal to a younger audience too. <laughs> uh, Definitely. You try to win their affection. Yes. Yeah, so again, you're trying to win them over. And I've seen this look like... Uh, I'm going to make you a five course meal on our mm. second date because I really like you and I want you to like me. And so you're doing too much too soon. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you, you think you have to prove yourself by winning them over in that mm -hmm. way. And I mean, I've had it the other way. I had a guy once who on a first date, he wanted to take me to uh, rent a yacht. And um, he had, he worked in a school and somebody had a yacht and he was like going to rent the yacht out and, and have like this catered meal. That was going to be our first date. And I was like, Hey, why don't we just meet and see if we like each other? <laughs> but he was just like all in. And by the second date, he told me I was the one. I mean, this guy was mm -hmm. just too much, too much. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's winning somebody over. You can't win somebody over. They like you for you, not not what you do for them. Essentially, exactly. I think is what it boils down to. Uh, mm -hmm. Finally, you have you. You feel like they have all the power. What what do you mean by that? Yeah, so you're giving them all the power in making all the choices. So like, I hope they like me. I hope they ask me out again. I can't really speak up because um, then I might push them away. So you're giving them so much power and you're not really checking in with yourself. Okay. So you're trying so hard to win them over in the sense that you're giving them all the power to decide if they want a relationship or not. And I've seen this also play out in terms of the kind of relationship a person is looking for. Let's say you want a serious, committed relationship and you're dating mm -hmm. somebody and you're afraid to bring it up. And so you're giving them the power to decide what the relationship looks like because you haven't discussed what it is that you want. Now, you may bring up what you want and they may not agree. And that's fine. That's actually good. Mm -hmm. But what most people do is they just kind of sit there and wait and hope mm -hmm. that by dating me enough, you're going to change your mind and somehow yeah. want the kind of relationship I want, but I'm not going to bring it up mm -hmm. because I'm going to let you decide. Yeah. So it's, it's takes two. It's not all up to one person to decide how this relationship is going to play out. Yeah. Great, great advice. That's such a, such a great point. And again, our, you know, with our viewers, uh, what do you think? <laughs> does some of this hit home? Uh, it certainly, you know, certainly does for me, not necessarily where I am now, some of it maybe, but certainly in my twenties or my thirties, it's one of those, um, if I'd only known then, but I didn't. So that's, we're talking about it now. <laughs> so what can you do in, instead, Sandy? What, what's, what, what's the good news? How, how do you, how do you get over this? Well, first of all, I want to say that I also did all these things. And that's <laughs> why I write about these things and talk about these things, because, yeah. you know, you live and you learn and, right. and hope that by sharing these things, we can help other people not make right. the same mistakes. Remember your value. Remember that you have worth. And I have three questions to ask mm -hmm. yourself to assess if this relationship is working for you, if you find yourself always doing all the hard work. So mm -hmm. the first question is, is that person that you're dating investing the same energy and time into the relationship as you are? Mm -hmm. And again, we're talking about reciprocity. So mm -hmm. if you're putting all the energy and you're making the five course meals and you're trying to win them over all the time, but they're not doing very much, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not working. Right. 
And then the next question is, are you giving from a place of love and generosity or from a place of insecurity and fear? Great question. So we often give because we want to win someone over. We're so insecure mm -hmm. that if we don't give enough, mm -hmm. that we're not, we're going to lose them. But if you're giving from a place of love, from generosity, from an open heart, then it's, again, you're not, you're not giving to get, you're giving because you care about that person and mm -hmm. hopefully it's reciprocal. That is such, such a great question. Are you, you know, what is the motivation behind you doing that? Once you, once you ask yourself that, you know, that, that can be an aha moment. It really can. I, I, I like that. Uh, the, the last one you have is why are you trying, so, why are you trying so hard to make the relationship work? Another great question. Yeah. I mean, ask yourself what, what's in it for me? Why, why is this so important? And yeah. a lot of times it's just ego. Like we, mm -hmm. we are motivated by ego. We just want to win someone over because it feels good mm -hmm. to win somebody over. But if mm -hmm. it's really not a healthy relationship dynamic, mm -hmm. it's not going to help you. And just satisfying your ego is, is not enough. You know, you need to really satisfy your heart and your soul. And that comes with time and with seeing if both people are giving um, to, a, to a large degree in this, on the same level. And mm -hmm. I always tell women who get really upset that men don't plan and they, you know, they have to do all the hard work. I, I tell them, first of all, you're creating that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. don't want to do all the hard work, you need to be able to speak up. You need to ask for what you want. You need to lean back and see if the person can do what you want them to do. They don't mm -hmm. know that you like a man who plans unless mm -hmm. you have said, I like when men plan because mm -hmm. I plan all day. I run my own business and I mm -hmm. love being taken care of in my, mm -hmm. in my romantic life. You know, you've got to be able to say those things. Yeah. Well, and again, uh, back to me, <laughs> what I, I, yeah, I plan all the time too. And that's spilled over into my uh, romantic life so much in the beginning when I first started dating that it was just overpowering. It just, I ran everybody off and, and we talk about, you know, those mistakes. Like, so why, you know, why are you doing this? I felt like I needed to have everything under control to keep it together. And that is not the way <laughs> you don't want to work work like that in a relationship. So I learned that, Sandy. I learned that. That's good. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think bottom line is that, you know, people, they don't, they don't fall in love with you or want to be with you for what necessarily what you do. I mean, they're, you know, they can be appreciative of it, but that's not going to make them love you. They love you for who, who you are. Sandy, what, what, what haven't we talked about? What haven't I asked? What do you want to leave our viewers with in this segment? I just want to say that there's a reason that many of us try too hard, and it really has to do with how we were brought up. Many of us were brought up having to prove our worth through good grades or the things that we did around the house, you know, get a you know, good pat on the back because you cleaned up and did your homework. And when you're being valued for that, rather than your feelings or who you are as a person, mm -hmm. we tend to replicate that in our romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is work with a coach or a therapist like me, um, because it is really important to really heal those parts of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we just keep repeating patterns and it's, it, it's crazy making, you know, we, we work so hard to try to get someone to love us and then we're left feeling heartbroken. And so many people just shut down and say, I don't want to date anymore. It's too mm -hmm. painful. And it doesn't have to be that way. So if you recognize yourself in this pattern, mm -hmm. please reach out, you know, let's get on a call and talk. Um, men, women, I work with both of you. And I would love to help you have the love that you want and go on your last first date. Absolutely. Yes, please. If anything resonated here, you feel like you want to talk to Sandy, I will have, uh, I'll have her uh, contact information in our show notes to your website, Last First Date, as well as to your podcast, Last First Date, and the book right here, that's it, right here. <laughs> 
choice points in dating, which has, it's almost a template to a lot of things that we talk about, uh, you know, how to, how to date and, and, and how to start a relationship. So again, Sandy, uh, thanks so much for all of your time, for your knowledge. And I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. Thank you.